Hello and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we'll, we will be talking about the Doctor Who 60th anniversary special number three, the final one before Christmas. And later this week I will release a full one with, sorry, with my thoughts for the whole 60th as a whole. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, as always, I've got my incredible notebook with all these fat notes. Unfortunately, I'm like quite busy today. So I'm doing this like between stuff and eating my lunch as well. So yeah. In case you're wondering, turkey, cucumber, lettuce, and cheese. Mm. Right, let's start with notes from the book. Right, plain. <laughs> right, Neil Patrick Harris's accent is incredible. I can't actually tell what accent it is, but whatever it is, it's incredible and I love it. The backstory of the toy maker in the shop and the um, the creation of television was such a great feature. And that's what I love about Doctor Who. Because it is a time-travelling show, you can set it anywhere. And that is what I love about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I've said. Backstory of the Time Maker was interesting. And the invention of television was interesting. With the first picture being of a, um, a puppet. Which was nice. It was really nice. And it really links into the later in the story. Which is so good. Mmm, shook my teeth. Mm. <laughs> Especially when you consider that there are so, so many, like, Doctor Who episodes where they just don't tackle the fact that they can go back. Which is, it's probably a good thing, though. But, like, it was good that they went back and forward. It was set in 1925 and 1923. So you've got, like, them two time periods to work with. Oh, it's just so cool. Mm. The doll was well designed, and I like how the doll looks really, really good as um, the um, how it looks really good as it looks really close to the actor in the scene, which is so good. Um, the street scene, which. And by the way, was one of the two early release scenes for this episode. Which is different, because for the other one we only had one. Which is still good. I really like getting an early release scene, like, before the episode. So to get that, I was really happy with. It was great to see it again. And it was great to see how they just tackled the fact that um, Bernard Cribbins was unable to film any more for Doctor Who. And they just said, you make sure my grandpa gets safe and he is a stuntman or a body double, whatever you want to call him, in that wheelchair. That, <laughs> that is what Doctor Who is. Right. Um, yeah, the use of Wilf was good. Um, uh, yeah, this was my first thought when I saw the, um, uh, what, that wrist thing, like really early on. My immediate thought, what is it? I'm like, what is it though? That was like my first thought and I still can't remember the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I like how the government are going, I'm right, you're wrong. And Don's just going, well, there's no change there then, which is so true. Especially when you consider, like, the scandals that have been going on in the UK recently. That is so, so true. I'm so happy. Well, not really, but I'm, like, glad that they somewhat acknowledged it. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. The machine man who was in the room, I thought he was pretty cool. And I wish we got to see more of him. And I think he might be a re re reoccurring character in, like, the next couple of series, which would be good. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
The explanation for what the arm thing was, I thought, was a very good idea. And it explains it really, really well. The, um... The way that, um... What's she called? Um... What is she called? Kate takes the thing off and then she, like, pretty much immediately changes. That was really good. And I love how they use Shirley in that scene. Because it tackles something that was, like, addressed within the first episode of these specials, where someone said, she crossed her legs on the internet. And we're like, okay. Like, there are people who will fall after a few minutes. It's not a big deal. Like, she crossed her legs, people in real death. Get over. Mm hmm. Yeah, I love Shelly how she was like, don't worry about it, babes. It's fine. Yes. She better return. Mm -hmm. The blaming of Korea is something I thought was really interesting. However, with the situation with Korea and North Korea and all that, people getting the two Koreas like mixed up could end up with a couple of like poor situations, which I don't think will happen. But like, they could have picked another country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The first image is interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the idea of the first image on television being that puppet and how that links to everything, I thought was really interesting. I'm thinking on from that, the how, how Donna was the one who figured it out and how she'd just been, like, given a job at unit from that is such a good idea. Like, why didn't we think of this before? Right. The idea of laughing at the human race is an interesting theory, and I actually quite like the way that they tackled it. I just think there were better ways to do it, though. Um, yeah, the, how they keep referencing the Time Maker's return, even before he returns, is, like, such a good use of foreshadowing for the characters. Which, for me, being someone who's, like, I've watched it twice, I watched it once on my own. Actually, no, I watched, watched it once with my mum, where I was, like, making notes on everything, and then I watched it again so I could just, like, digest the story a bit more. And actually... I still enjoy it, so, you know, there's that. Mm. The fancy helicopter deck where it, like, lowers was so interesting. Because, like, when you consider it, it feels so Marvel, and it feels so different to Doctor Who. Like, we're used to Doctor Who being, like, run out of a garden shed, pretty much. So to see that is something completely different. Um, Donna's negotiation to work with the unit was so funny. And how she just goes, can I have this? And, and Kate's just like, yeah, sure. She doesn't care. And that is what I love. And I want it to return. It means we might get more of her. And I hope it does. And I'm just realising that this room is so echoey because there's no one here. Yeah, no, my mum's running a pantomime. It's um, Sleeping Beauty. Feel free to buy tickets. I will leave a link to the ticket source page in the description. And, um, yeah, make sure you go and check it out. And my dad's doing some other stuff. He's, like, working, I think. Um, Mel's return was incredible. Albeit, I couldn't think of a name for about three scenes. <laughs> and I feel so bad. Which is why it's so late mentioned in my notes, if you're thinking of the episode in chronological order. Like, her return was, like, four or five minutes before this, and I'm like, Ugh! Anyway. And again, the second release scene, the ball scene. The ball is the first game! And blah, blah. That was so good to see again, and it made me laugh so much. They picked a great actor for it. 
Honestly, I was messaging with one of my friends straight after it. She's called Molly. She was like, Do you know Patrick Harris? He's so I was like, Calm down. <laughs> but yeah, no. Great. Great just to have that, isn't it? Mm. I hope the colour version of the Toy Maker has been released as like a full episode on iPlayer. Because that would be good. And they've not just like used it for that two or three bits that they used in the episode. Which was really cool actually. Because I want to know how that's done. And I'm hoping that's an Unleashed because I've not watched that yet. And I didn't have time. And I want to watch it now. I'll probably watch it after I've eaten actually. Anyway. And the Northern Logic to the Toy Maker was nice. Um, it still just feels like a regular episode, but not a 60 year special, which is a shame, really. Um, great to see the pain in the Doctor, which is good. Um, incredi um, it's incredible to see fear from the Doctor. And I love the reference to um, Donna's dad. Who, of course, the actor is no longer with us. And he was seen in uh, The Runaway Bride and Never Again. Which is a shame, really. But I hope we see him again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love how both the Doctor and Donna have the same plan to try and find each other again. And it's great to see like more people to interact with in this episode than the last one. Um, love the puppets, especially the one of the Doctor, because that was really interesting. And again, Unleashed, need to watch. Hmm. So yeah, like I said, the first time I watched it, I was with my mum. And my mum saw the dolls and she was like, well, that's a bit creepy. <laughs> Which was like the first thing she said and that made me laugh so much. And I'm so happy that I got to spend time with my mum when I'm watching Doctor Who. And I'm watching all these specials and it's so funny. Mm-hmm. Mm. The way Donna killed that doll was so cool. And I really hope we see more of that, like to come with Ruby Sunday. The Time Maker's Death recap shows it's 14, not 10. That recap where it's like, Don, uh, meets uh, Donna Noble and whatever else. Uh, meets um, Amy Pond, new ginger, but she died of old, of old age. Well, that's okay then. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, the fear of the one who waits, that's really interesting. The cancel culture reference is really interesting from um, the time maker, I'm going to rush through this now because I don't have a lot of memory left on my phone. So, um, explanation of time maker's rules are fun. Collapse of time maker's world is fun and well edited. The setup of the laser in the satellite explosion is fun to watch. That is the scene if you're not going to watch any other that you need to watch. Yes, all of you. You. You and you and you and you. Right, that hurt my eyes watching the recording, so I apologise. Um, yeah, Donna becoming more technical is beautiful to see. Um, fighting a force from universe is interesting. It's different, but it's interesting. And the time maker scene in Unit HQ where he's throwing flowers everywhere was so funny. I was in stitches of laughter. Especially because he's just throwing people everywhere. And that is what I love about Doctor Who. It is so unserious. But tackling serious topics. Right. Um, the face conversation was great. Loving the link to the Celestial Time Maker all the time. 
Um, the regeneration from Time Maker was a great idea. So, like, forcing the regeneration from the Time Maker was a great idea. The strength from the companions was great, where they were, like, holding the Doctor's hand, like, you will not die. Um, and Death by Alon Z was a great reference to um, the Titanic episode. Um, is it Voyage of the Damned? The splitting of the Doctor was cool by by generation. Um, I was watching it with both my parents and my dad said, Will he put pants on? So, Nasuti Gatwa, get pants for the next episode. Thank you. Um, the ball game was fun to watch. Loving the design of the unit world with um, codes and ideas. Um, who picked up the tooth? <coughs> this is where I start to get my questions, which I'm hoping will link into the next one. Who picked up the tooth? Donna's suggestion to stay links a lot to Matt Smith with the cubes in that episode where he's like, I'll get bored, and that's a good thing. <laughs> they found each other. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. I love how they just came home and rested. That was perfect. New TARDIS, which is kind of nuts, and I loved it. However... It is a bit samey, and I'm hoping there is another one, and I'm hoping that the only change is between the two isn't that they've bought a jukebox, because that's a bit stupid. Wheelchair access, could that lead to some other companions? And could that lead to the TARDIS being boarded by Daleks? Um... Don't shout! Oh, don't salute Link at the end was really cool. Where he's like, no. and he's like, and mm -hmm. that is so, it's so ten, and I loved it. Um, the Doctor loves the moles. I don't know how I feel about that, and I think that's just a passing phrase that will be forgotten. Um, love the family dinner, dinner, hope to see more again, and can't wait for Christmas. That's the end of the episode, the next time trailer, linked down below, make sure you click that. Um, uh, go goblins look cool, villains look interesting, can't wait. One more thing, I think there's more to Ruby Sunday than what we know, because she was the one holding onto the ladder, not Nasuti Gatwa. And I hope that is something that we are going to get. Mm. Now then, make sure you watch Unleashed, because I will be doing, and we'll never mention it here. Cast 9. Costume design, 9. Links to other seasons, this one was high, a 10. Characters, 9. CGI, 8. Plots, 9. Music, 9. Battles, 8. Villain 7, TARDIS Interior 7, Rewatchability 7, and Availability 7. That there is your Doctor Who journey all done, with an average of 8.25. There will be a video on just the 60th, all judged, coming out later this week. And I can't wait to show you that. Now then, thank you for watching today's video. Make sure to click here, to click here to watch some of my other videos and click here to subscribe. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. So make sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below, click the links to watch the next time trailer and the link to watch, um, uh, to come and watch the pantomime. I am going on the Sunday and maybe I will see you there. Now, as always, I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.